yeah, it really feels to me like they're setting something up with Ray. She could be corrupted. You know, like, um, there could be cross-contamination going here in a lot of ways. Like, the angels could be corrupting the robot suits. Each time you fight them, maybe some of these nanites... They mentioned last episode, or two episodes ago, there was, like, nanites or something. So these nanites could be infecting the, the, the suits, which... And the suits are interacting directly with your brain, so then they can infect your brain, right? Like, that could happen. So I don't know. Like, I mean... I'm going to keep an eye on it because it seems like they're setting that up and I can imagine that kind of corruption or it could just be the trauma, you know, or that corruption could be a metaphor for the trauma, more likely, right? You know, the demons of Buffy were just metaphors. They weren't actual demons. You know what I mean? Like, you know, within the universe, they were demons. But what you're telling the audience is like you're telling different kinds of stories. It's not just straight up. Like, that's the difference between Hercules and Xena Warner Princess and something like Buffy. They were delving to tell a, to tell a deeper story. So this story could be about these magical aliens called angels, and you're fighting them, and their nanites corrupt your suit, which then corrupts your brain, turns you evil, turns you against your friends. But what the story you're actually talking about, what you're actually telling, is the story of trauma and PTSD and how that can make you turn against people in your life. So that could be what's going on here. I'm going to keep my eye on it. Anyway, this is episode 15, and we're on the very first frame. We're going on one. Three, two, one. Yep, each one of these is a crater. An impact site, I guess I would say. Plus, they're doing something with this dude, man. I assume he's he's on our side. It's just as likely that he's actually behind everything. He's creating the angels, right? Who the hell knows? He's so inscrutable. Yeah, yeah, she's a problem. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Definitely a problem. There's a lot of moving parts in this show. Like, they keep bringing up Marduk, for instance. You know what's interesting? Civ 5 Kyoto is the capital of Japan, not Tokyo. So I assume that's realistic in history. I haven't really studied Japanese history that much, just the broad strokes. So I guess Kyoto was eventually was originally their capital city and they changed it to Tokyo for some reason. Don't make him bust a cap. It's always funny. In a satire, it got to be like this. He's gonna, it looks like he's going to pull out a gun. He just pulls out a comb, you know? <laughs> yep. I think they're all dummies. They're investigating the company. So they're, they're starting a deeper storyline here. I wouldn't think they'd still be expanding the story. We're on episode 15. You should start being contracting the story. Unless you thought you were going to get another season, right? Yeah, I ain't leaving nothing. Haha, <laughs> pissed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really so effing dramatic man <laughs> he's busy man call his cell phone oh wait we don't know about those yet There's a certain smug look she gets on her face when she's talking with her eyes closed. It's great animation. Yeah, begging me. She likes that. Her narcissism will love that, right? You should go over and talk to her, dude. Like, this is a problem. This is a massive problem. <laughs> never mind. You're surrounded by idiots. You're never allowed any moment to, like, actually do something, you know? 
constructive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I love this uh, body language, right? <laughs> One thing I've noticed with a lot of this animation, Bojack Horseman do a lot. They, they do this, right? Like they rub the back of their neck when they're nervous. I don't know that the actual human beings do it. You never see that in live action, right? But um, it's I think it's an easy thing to do in, in animation. You're trying to convey what the character is feeling. It doesn't have to be realistic, right? You're always bored. Yeah, she bought you. Well, that's not nice. Yeah, you know you want to see him. How about the fact he's an a-hole? He's trying to connect with you, asshole. Yeah, you know him better than I do. I'm jealous. Didn't she cuss him out once for talking bad about his dad? She did. Don't don't pretend. Don't get all coy now. You know you're obsessed with him. <laughs> I noticed you staring at me. <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to say? I didn't think that was why he was staring at him. I thought he was staring at her because he was worried about her. Like, of course he's an idiot. He didn't even know this. Dude, she doesn't know what planet she's on, man. Unbelievable. What are you talking about? Did they hold up an every cue card? You're damn right. Exactly. That's when you know the writing's good. When you have an off-the-cuff response and then the character says the same thing, that doesn't make you a genius. It means that the writer's a genius. The writer anticipated what an actual human being would say, right? Mm, I love that. That's what excites me. It's not that it does excite me that I hit a line, right? It excites me that the writing is that good, you know? Stop being racist. Uh-oh. The one company he's gotten in his entire life from his parent. The hell you want? Yeah, pretend you're asleep. Pretty much. Screw him. He's an a-hole. Screw him. Yeah, I understand he's an a-hole. We all realize that about our shitty parents, right? I was wondering, is that the first mention of his mother? Like, maybe it was just in passing here and there, right? Like, he never brings her up. It's like, uh, oh boy, uh, Vinland Saga. All he cares about is his dead dad. His mom is still alive as far as he knows and literally doesn't care. No, I thought in, head, I thought in his head about her, you know. When a parent's your favorite, they're your favorite. That's what it is. <laughs> really? We're going to do a montage saying goodbye to the stupid penguin. That's what we're doing? Penguin cracks me up. <laughs> we get three seconds of a great song. <laughs> I like this wedding montage. And that's about how much time I want to spend on a wedding. That 20 seconds is it. No more than that. Ah, meow. Yep. Yeah, not like I care. You care. You care a lot. <laughs> hey, you dated a jerk like him. Hey, man. Just remember, the worse you talk about an ex, the more bad that makes you look that you were ever with that person. Just so you know. Oh, I see. Okay. That's why she hasn't come up. Okay, gotcha. I get it. 
Yep. Wow, dude, it's only been three years. Jesus. He really is a cold. We know this, right? It's not a shock that he's a cold a-hole, right? But damn, he's a cold a-hole. Really? So she's still alive is what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah, sounds like rationalization to me. First rule of TV. No body, no dead. You ain't dead if I don't see your body. <laughs> Look at him glaring. <laughs> That's right. Look at her. She's in there. What's up with you and that chick? Hey, man, this is actually kind of sweet. <laughs> I see, really. I love you. I know. People love that that, that exchange in uh, Empire Strikes Back. I think it's one of the worst things ever written. I know it's an improv, but just go with me on this. That was terrible. It's not clever and it's not cute. This was as bad as that. Now, notice I'm not saying bad. Well, I did say it's worse. I don't mean bad writing, even though, again, it was improv, not writing. I just mean it's awful. It's an awful thing for two people to do to each other, right? Yeah, the penguin's just chilling, man. <laughs> but, uh, okay, Wednesday, Adams. But, yeah, he's like, I'm glad I got to talk to you today. I see. Wow, dude. Wow. Huh. She's not being a complete jerk. What the hell is this? You've been switched with a pod person. <laughs> Mild. Of course, she has to qualify, right? <laughs> what the hell you want, Penguin? Keep the damn door closed. <laughs> Don't you ever look in on me again. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Go to hell. Yep. She is mean. I mean. Have you just met her? Of course she's mean. <laughs> Isn't he like really old? Like he's got to be above age and she's under it. She's like 14, right? The hell are you talking about, girl? <laughs> really? <laughs> the character interactions are so good on this show. That's why I think it's a feel-good show, man. As much as trauma as they talk about, I talked about this before, right? I don't care how much trauma they explore. This is a feel-good show because I feel good when I watch it. And just like everything else in this world, it all the only thing that matters is how you feel, right? Pretty much. Explains a lot, though. <laughs> that tracks, actually. Now, see, this is a ship I don't care about. Him and uh, Minnesota, right? I literally couldn't care. Although, the tension between them is hilarious. So, I do like that. <laughs> That's right. Roast him. Yeah, you're so concerned. Thank you for your concern. Uh-oh. Pretty much. Homeostasis. I know that word. What the hell does that mean? I can't remember. <laughs> it does sound like it, doesn't it? Yep, she did that on purpose. Well, now it's just the two of us. How convenient. <laughs> really? Alrighty. So how about you clean up that table? Look at, look at all this shit just laying around, man. Clean this kitchen up. The hell's wrong with you two? Kids. That's what's wrong with them. Kids. 
Yep, I tell myself that, that all the time. I was in my 40s before I'd thrown up 10 times. I just never was a person who threw up. I actually had killed it how many times I'd thrown up in my life. Once I got to 10, I stopped counting. So it's probably less than 20 by now. But yeah. This doesn't happen that often. Well, I mean, I think you should put shoes on. I do think that. I don't know about, you know, the beautiful stuff. <laughs> really? We're getting some actual contrition. She must be really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I do like their chemistry. I just don't care about the shipping part of it, right? But uh, they do have great chemistry. Like the way they play off each other. I was talking about that before with the tension, right? Yeah, that's not even something a guy wants to hear, by the way. For the love of God, don't compare me to your father. <laughs> but she's explaining what's happening, so I get it. I get what she says. Yep. Yep. This may actually be an episode with no action, which I'm totally cool with. Last one kind of was, except they showed all the action from previous episodes, right? How much we got left here? Like about seven, eight minutes maybe at the most? They don't have time for an angel to just drop in. She gets dramatic when she's drunk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There are some parallels here. That's, I think that's why her and Sinji get along. The parallels, right? It really is. Yeah, drop it. Drop it or I'll kiss you. Conniving bitch. Damn. Kiss her, you fool. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even going to take a cue card, man. It's so obvious. Like, that's why they have a ranting like that, because that's the only way to get you to shut the hell up. <laughs> so good. So effing good, man. I had to stop and go do something, and now I'm back for this. <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> no. Hell no. Not just no. Hell no. <laughs> You're out of your damn mind. That's the worst reason ever to kiss somebody. The absolute worst reason. Uh, that's not the reason. You're, okay, you're a douchebag. You're a flaming narcissist. You're insulting. You're annoying. We're really doing this. Unbelievable. Hell no. She's probably just trolled him anyway. <laughs> Why the hell would you... It's, there's no way in hell, man. You're not shipping. I am shipping, shipping something in Planetes? Whatever it's called. Oh, that's right. The penguin's outraged. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we needed. A penguin reaction shot, right? Yep. Call the police. <laughs> no, he's out of here. <laughs> I thought he was calling the police. Yeah, that's right. Look at him. He's suffocating. Worst kiss ever. <laughs> well, is she still bored or what? Oh, I see. See, that's what you set yourself for. Why would you do this, man? When somebody doesn't like you, do not give them ammunition. Do not hand them a weapon to use against you. Like, I don't know how many times I teach this lesson to these stupid kids. Anyway, what I was going to say was I, I backed up a little bit so it could queue up, right? Sync up. And uh, <laughs> that's who she really wants to kiss. <laughs> I love how she dropped her shoes during the kiss. That was a great moment. I really like that. Like, yeah, it's not going to happen. ha, <laughs> Dude, there's like a 15-year uh, age difference between you two. Let go of him. She is the absolute worst. I get it, though. You know, girl crush. I get it. <laughs> I understand. You know, and he literally is like, she doesn't even exist, right? <laughs> He's paying her zero mind whatsoever. She does not exist. <laughs> oh, 
why we don't hand like you wouldn't hand an assassin a knife to use against you. So why are you doing it emotionally, right? Like that's what what I'm saying. He's an idiot. Yeah, what's up? What is up? Because this can't be good. She needs to be in cryostasis, man, because there's something wrong with her. What if she's even real? You think maybe he he built her? Like she's actually like a Frankenstein type monster? Uh, uh, look at this, man. <laughs> 2,008 meters below same, huh? Um, I wonder about that. Like she's not a real person, you know? Maybe she was originally and you cloned her a bunch of times. Shoot him. <laughs> That's right. Shoot him right now. It's a side hustle. Yep. Shoot this mofo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will blow your face off. Yeah, I spit on your apology. <laughs> you don't owe him anything. Yeah, it's rough all over. She's ready to blow him up, man. Ventilate his skull. Oh, crap. The hell is it? Oh, it's one of the angels, right? Oh, Jesus. Interesting. Yep, I knew there's more than me see eyes. Yep. See, now we get our first cliffhanger. I don't remember if I was talking about this in Planetes. Um, but I think it was over there that I was talking about this. I know there's not going to be 100% crossover. I understand that. But just there's crossover in my brain, so I'm going to say it here. I was talking about how Cowboy Bebop and, to a certain extent, Vinland Saga. Not every time, but to a certain extent. And also, this show does not have cliffhangers. Like, it's self-contained stories. Yes, there's a continuing story. From one week to the next, one episode to the next, you're, you know, things carry over. But there's never been a cliffhanger. This is essentially a cliffhanger. It's not like, oh my god, we're all going to die. It's not that kind of a cliffhanger. But it's definitely a cliffhanger in that, man, I would meet, I don't have time to watch another one at all. But, like... I really wish I did because this kind of cliffhanger makes you want to just immediately put it in the next episode, right? So now they're finally doing it. But they got a ways to catch up where, like, you had this kind of crazy cliffhanger every episode of, like, Full Metal or certain parts of it. Or especially Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan is crazy with their cliffhangers. 